This is your host, Ashraya, and today we bring to you Dr. Darshan Mehta on his perspectives of authenticity in leadership. As we've discussed leadership in its entirety, we have been brought to address the matter of specific tenets which constitute leadership as an overarching subject. Authentic leadership, one of these facets, is regarded as one of the most primary necessities and forms which are present under the vast umbrella of leadership. Let's find out more about what its importance and relevance is in today's leading social context from Dr. Mehta. So Dr. Mehta, what is your definition of leadership? Does it encompass having core values and overarching vision or setting short-term specific goals? Uh, I mean, I think of, uh, for me, the def definition of leadership really is about core values. And I would say the most important value is being authentic to who you are. No two leaders are the same. And you shouldn't, a true leader isn't going to be someone he or she is not meant to be so uh, you learn from other leaders and you learn from their styles and their ways of being uh, ultimately i you the, the leader develops his or her own style her way of being and um and is able to really be transparent around that Within your own career, you have chosen a rather unique pathway within the medical field to pursue through alternative medicine. How has this changed your experience, would you say, as a student, as a professional, than it may be for like a traditional medical student or professional? Yeah. Uh, I think one of the best parts of the work I've done is it's allowed me to sort of challenge uh, the norm and, and what we do. And so being sort of part of a very um, conservative medical environment uh, with with a lot of sort of uh, scholarly history I would say the uh, the best part of this uh, is that I'm amidst sort of the uh, skeptics and I'm amidst people who always challenge me and that's actually a very good thing because it is really in that challenge that allows the work that I'm passionate about to really be uh, tested and really expand uh, so for example, uh, one of my passions currently is around how we think about healthcare provider resilience and uh, and we've been able to sort of stake a claim locally here at uh, uh, Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital around those topics. It was not even a topic that people had even thought of five years ago. I mean, very few people had. Uh, and certainly not locally here. And just I just returned from a national academic meeting where that was the theme of the entire conference. So just how quickly all this, and to be sort of leading the charge locally here around that front has been an amazing uh, experience for me. The other thing that I think what this work is, it has allowed me to um, uh, create uh, an academic career that is different from other people that comes with both its uh, perils and its its benefits. The perils being that no one really understands what you do. Uh, the benefits being that uh, you are allowed to sort of create your own journey and path because no one really understands what you do. So I, I actually um, have loved doing this work in part because it is, um, I have, it has allowed me to cr create my own sense of expertise create my own sense of passion and create my own vision that is which I've had lucky to have mentors guide me along the way but uh, it's allowed me to create my own. Uh, could you maybe give us an example of where you've seen or your role model of leadership who you've tried to exemplify the characteristics of? Um, so I would say uh, you know uh, you know one of my role models around leadership at the, I guess at the, with the, at the risk of sounding too cliche, but uh, I will say it anyway, that generally is what it is for me, is, is, is I think of somebody like Mahatma Gandhi, who again, uh, was very honest and truthful with his, his belief around what was needed and, and, and stuck to that, but had an amazing 
ability to listen to all different types of, of people um, of various different backgrounds. And ultimately, the, his legacy is not built on his writings or his uh, speech. Uh, it is all built upon his action. Uh, he acted in, 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 again, very innovative ways that no one had previously even thought of, that this was even possible and stayed consistent with his action. There were no surprises in anything that he did. Uh, uh, and ultimately, um, at the end of his life, uh, he actually completely, um, in some ways left, he recognized that in order for there to be growth, he has to leave or dissolve himself uh, completely. And he did, uh, ultimately, he, he ended up not, you know, he, uh, as I think of the story, he was not present in Delhi on the day of India's independence. He wasn't even there at that moment. So that's, a, to me, an example of just sort of what, you know, leadership over time. Uh, and obviously, it goes without saying, there was tremendous amount of patience required at, uh, in the journey that he took on. But it's an inspiring uh, life story for me, uh, simply because it showed what was possible at the hand of one individual. Within the subcontext of authentic leadership, one must note a number of divisions and methodically approach the question of how to be an authentic leader, of how to satisfy the definition that we will derive from our discussion today of authenticity. But first, let's observe authenticity as an entity. From there, we will relate it to the outlined roles of a leader and furthermore bridge the gap between the two areas of subject and then finally come to the cumulative stance of how to truly be an authentic leader. Which aspect of leadership do you think is diminished in today's society which if incorporated could actually play a pivotal role? Uh, I would say um, to me it's, it's really uh, the element of of being try being authentic, uh, I, I think we try to be, uh, or many leaders or many people who are in leadership positions try to be something that they are not, and that's where we see um, uh, ineffective leadership, or sometimes even uh, you know where people are not truthful or not honest. I, I never, I never would think that their intent is not good, although some people may have bad intent, but but sometimes where things go off the track is when someone actually tries to be something that they're not and are not open about that or honest about that. Now, I would just put a caveat that uh, I, I do feel that it is important for leaders to stretch themselves and and, and to try uh, other try something that may not be necessarily comfortable to the self. I mean, leaders are able to push boundaries. So it's not that you can't push boundaries, but ultimately when it comes to putting things into action, if it doesn't come from sort of learned experience, uh, then it's not going to be real. Authenticity can be regarded as a contextual term used to apply to a plethora of instances. Nevertheless, there is a common theme amongst the plethora of instances that we can apply to the definitive associations of the term. As a term, let's have you decide. Is the dictionary definition of authenticity truly sufficient to characterize an authentic leader? Or is there more to it? Dr. Mehta has his perspectives to contribute towards this matter as well. Mark Echo once noted that authenticity is a number of different things, including what you do, what you feel, etc. Do you feel as though one of these is specifically overarching in that sense, or do you feel as though each part of authenticity plays an equal role? Um, yeah, it's, I would say each, in my opinion, each part plays an equal role. But it's, it's, it's how you are as a person, how you treat others. It's also about what you do. It is about setting a vision and the way that that vision can inspire somebody else to want to be with you 
in the in that that also is part of it. And then uh, I think the, the leader is able to is actually able to fulfill some or all of that vision. It's uh, and, and or leave others with that feeling that that, that vision has opportunity and has been realized or can be realized. And I think, uh, I mean, the, the leaders certainly that I admire in my life are able to realize it. Um, and then they continue to move forward in, in terms of a, a more vision uh, or building on that vision to something even bigger and greater. Discussing the validity of being an authentic leader though, brings about the question of transparency. And specifically within that, how much transparency is appropriate? Is transparency necessitated for a leader to be truly authentic towards their team? And how do we measure the necessity and the levels of transparency which we accord within the team proceedings? The answer lies within the structuring of the roles of a leader. Discussing what it precisely is that causes an individual to be successful in leading their team. In addition, we can fortify this existing definition of authenticity in leadership by applying it to the context of leadership's areas of impact upon oneself, upon the team, and upon the provisions to which it's being applied. Uh, the Greek philosopher once noted that we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. So within communication, how do you think leaders can discern appropriate communication and differentiate that from over communication or a, a lack of communication? That's, yeah, that's a tough question. I would say, um, and again, communication is, uh, is fundamental. I think a good leader is able to adapt, I would say, their communication styles. So sometimes you have to be sort of taking a step back and listening uh, uh, quite a bit. Other times you actually have to set the boundaries of the conversation and say, this is what we need to discuss in order to get the things done that are needed to be done. But again, uh, when it comes to, um, I think a good leader is willing to, doesn't mean necessarily adopting every idea that is presented before him or her, but is willing, has a, a, a willingness to listen to the entirety of the idea. The willingness to let others know that they are heard. And then based on that evidence or based on that sort of assimilation of knowledge or assimilation of, of thought, are you able to then construct a more comprehensive sort of uh, uh, plan or a comprehensive sort of call of action. So I would, um, I would say what is, you know, uh, again, important in communication is, again, I think as you said, you know, it's, a, it's number one willingness, you have to be able to listen. Number two, you have to be able to synthesize what you listen. And number three, then you have to be able to communicate a call, a sort of an action plan or call to action based on that synthesis. First and foremost, a leader should be necessitated to form an environment in which productive results can be ascertained by the team by manner of balancing the work and the levels of engagement amongst the team members and the components of the team. Furthermore, a key necessity of the team is to form a cumulative conscience and therefore promote the, the team's functions as an entity together. By ensuring that there is a balance of powers within the team as well, the levels of cooperation within inter- and intra-team relations will be noticed as significantly higher and will successfully allow a leadership to be established, which fosters the environment for authenticity to then be promoted. To accumulate that authenticity though, further efforts, which we will now outline, must be considered. Let's see what Dr. Mehta has to say on this subject. Albert Einstein once also noted that if A equals success, then A equals X plus Y plus Z, whereby he's assuming that X equals work, Y equals play, and Z equals the wisely chosen speech. So how do you feel that future leaders should attempt to attain this balance of work, play, and communication? Um, 
Well, obviously, step one is having awareness that all that is needed. Balance. I mean, I think if you don't have even the awareness, then it's hard to have a balance. So I think that's probably the most important step. I think after that, uh, again, every it's, it goes back to this uh, original thing of authenticity. If you're, for example, uh, a runner and you want to, and your place of sort of play is running, and you find inherent joy in that, that's that is what is real for you. But that might not be real for the person next to you or the leader who is next to you. For him or her, it might be uh, the um, uh, uh, some other form of uh, physical activity uh, that provides a sense of grounding. Maybe it's uh, canoeing or you know, rowing. So, that, so again, the idea being that uh, it, the, whatever um, you choose to do, however you strike that balance has to work for you. A leader, for example, who has um, uh, their own family or has their own, is going to think very differently than a, another person who has, uh, is on their own for whatever reason. So that's a very different, you're not going to have similar guiding principles because the priorities already are, have, are from different starting points. I think it has to be authentic and real for, your, for yourself. After our elaborate discussion surrounding this topic, let's discuss the true essence of the subject. What makes a leader authentic? What truly is it that makes them satisfy that definition? And how can we ascertain that the next generation of leaders will all be able to? Speaking from a technical perspective, an authentic leader is one who employs all of the shown characteristics and is able to balance them with one another in relevant manners and ratios, although not equal ratios. The authentic leader purposes their team and their actions in such a manner that efficacy is of the essence. Following this, self-discipline is then a necessary characteristic. As such, relevances can be derived for each of the overall categories listed. If one were to go into more detail, there is the matter of discussion regarding the ability for the trust of the team to be formed. Visiting back to the subject of transparency then, we can note that the necessary balance to truly achieve the authenticity factor of a leader necessitates that the team leader is able to engage and is able to maintain that transparency within a team's boundaries. This highlights that leaders at all characteristics and all stages have in essence a core of maintaining authenticity, whatever their style of leadership be, to ensure the success of themselves, their team, and the endeavors of the team as an entity. If we are to take the essences of authentic value, authentic inspiration, and authentic initiative, each of which are absolutely mandated to balance for a leader, we can come to the formula which we were seeking at the beginning of our discussion. An authentic leader is then one who employs the use of authentic value, authentic inspiration, and authentic initiative. They are able to take their team to the next level by purposing every component of their team, therefore addressing the subject of authenticity quite authentically and with utmost sincerity. So within the youth, do you see a specific area of leadership where there necessitates greater involvement or greater depth? Or do you feel as though there is a specific area where youth contribution is necessitated today? Uh, I would say, I mean, youth contribution is, is most important in the generation of new ideas. I think as we get older, uh, we tend to get more and more fixed in our notions of the way the world is, the way the world um, will be. Uh, having recently crossed my own birthday, you know, you realize how fixed uh, your sort of view of the world is. And it's only when you have the infusion of youth where their responsibility is really to challenge, um, well, yeah, it is that and it can be this much more. And that to me is the most, the other thing that youth are is, is really 
their role is important as, as in sort of a call to action. Uh, when we think of even most modern movements today, even the leader may, uh, the leader relies upon the energy of the youth to actually put things into action. And, uh, and, and to me, that's, uh, that's fundamentally important part of, of the youth. What is your essential formula of leadership for the next generation of leaders? leadership so form again uh, it's really based formula is really knowing the self or yourself so authentic, being really authentic to your true self uh, is, is number one number two is again the willingness to uh, be with others that may not um, uh, agree with you and, and being able to have dialogue uh, a leader obviously will have the people who fully agree with him or her, and, and that's fine. But where growth happens is when you encounter people who don't agree with you. Yeah. And then the third is really um, what I would say, as I mentioned earlier, the call to action. Uh, leadership does not exist without action. As we conclude our spectacular discussion today, we'd like to take an opportunity to thank Dr. Mehta for taking his time to speak with us and for giving us the perspective of what he thinks our next generation could do to be authentic leaders. We are extremely grateful for his perspectives on the matter. And we are furthermore grateful for the opportunities that he has provided to us, the next generation of leaders, to be the authentic leaders that we will. Gen Lead, this is Ashraya signing off. And until next time, we'd like to hear from you in the comments section and Please don't forget to like and subscribe.